So, might have a little PTSD for us. So, I was at Notre Dame College, is where I, I, you know, I had a double major in communications and English, a double minor in psychology and writing. Couldn't find a job. I was I graduated uh, spring 2007, so couldn't find a job. I didn't realize it was like going to be the second worst time ever. ever. <laughs> you know? um, didn't see that coming, but just like, oh, I'll get into business. So just kind of getting into the business world is kind of how it was, it was the best. <clears throat> it was the best kind of accident. It was the best kind of forced thing for me. You know, it wasn't necessarily my plan. Um, so the irony is, I go around and tell them it all starts with a plan, but you know. It's not about your plan going how it's supposed to. That's not how life works, right? So, but it's just the fact that if you, you know, dug in deep into why your plan is what it is, when opportunities arise, when life happens and things change, you can, you know, the end result is most likely going to be way different than you initially set out. But like, you're able to appreciate it, enjoy it, and succeed at it because it's you have deeper meaning than just the transactional things that you're doing each day um, but uh, my family doesn't miss me when they're sleeping um, but finishing that thought and you'll see I'm very the Schleicher squirrel brain tends to go back and forth so at any time say all right pause <laughs> go back to what you were talking about or you know if you have a question just you know let me know um, but I was in one of the psychology classes and a brand new professor. And um, at the time, it was like the most state of the art Notre Dame College room that we, we had. And so she goes up, you know, starts drawing and have class. So it turns out it was like one of those smart boards. The, she ruined it, not realizing that she just ruined the most expensive piece of equipment <laughs> that we had. Um, so. I might be a little nervous around technology in a classroom, so that's why we're just going to stick over here. But um, this, again, something that George talks about. I am naturally a night owl. Now, as things have progressed, after this was the CEO of our firm, you know, he, he was up 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and I, it was back in 2014. I was you know, fortunate enough to have dinner with them, and I was like, man, how do you, you know, how do you get up so early? Like, I try, like, I'm the guy that hits the snooze button for three hours, all right, and my wife wants to murder me. So the, um, it just does, getting up early does not come natural still. Like, it's just, it's a struggle. But, you know, I assume that his feedback to me would be, you know, money never sleeps, business never sleeps, blah, 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 right? But, you know, this was his response to me. Was my, my family doesn't miss me when they're sleeping, and he's you know Fortune 500 CEO, you know just it's, he's got a lot on his plate. So just kind of this really changed everything for me. So that's where like it, you know right now um, I got my wife Erica been married nine years. My son JJ is going into uh, first grade. Crazy first grade. He's got the count. He's like Dad, 13 more days till first day, or however 10 days now, 10 days till first day. But uh, just at uh, Kirtland down the road here. Julia, my daughter's go, uh, four, she's going into pre-K. And so just kind of like before I had kids, you know, this was very important for me with, you know, I wouldn't be married still had, I, had this not happened. Because I, I wouldn't, I'm not, as though George, you know, read some of my stuff in my books, like, oh, this is just so easy, right? You know, but like this, it's very easy for me to wake up, go to work, work till I drop, right? Just like try to work every second of the day and try and, you know, talking about like just, you know, wearing shorts instead of a suit and stuff. Like it's, it was never about trying to like rebel or, um, you know, kind of fight the machine or whatever you want to call it. But like, it was more about like, okay, if I can just get 12 minutes a day, that's, you know, about an hour a week, which is 52 hour week, or excuse me, 52 hours a year. Well, that's, 48 hours, that's a little over two days extra. So I have, you know, most people get up and they got 365 days a year, but I just cut out an hour a week, so I actually have 360. So like, that's kind of how my mind works, is I'm trying to, how can I get that same 24-hour window? How can I get more out of it? Not just for what I want, right? So it's not just like, so obviously, you're here because you're driven to take that next step, right? And whatever it is, but also too, 
Um, anybody heard the, the book, The Five Love Languages? Um, really, really good book, Five Love Languages. Um, for Erica, hers is, is quality time. And then a close second is acts of service. So like the best thing I can do for my marriage is the dishes. Lots and lots of dishes, right? And guess what? After I'm the oldest of four boys, I'm, I magically got, it was not my turn to do the dishes, but guess who ended up doing the dishes every time? Yeah, so I like bowed, no dishes. Like I would, before I met Erica, I was at my condo, I would be eating my food over the sink so I didn't have to wash. Like I was committed. So the, you know, just the sweet irony of the one thing I was so committed to is the most important thing I should be doing, OK? So you know, these little things of, you know, OK, you're going to work your tail off. You're here, I mean, like, think about it. You could be anywhere else right now. But you, you all, you're all bettering yourself, right? You're taking that risk. You're, you're sacrificing that time. But you know, another question you want to ask, if I could write words. You know, is who's there with me, right? So you are, you're all getting your MBAs, correct? So again, just the way I'm picturing it is you're walking across the stage or there's some type of ceremony. You got that, you know, that MBA in hand, right? Who's, who is waiting for you as you get off the stage? Like, who are you celebrating with afterward? You know what I mean? And it doesn't. Everybody's situation is different, but like my vision of success always had Erica in it, and what is now JJ and Julia. Now I didn't; they didn't exist, you know, at this time that all this was going on. But in my mind, that's you know, it's like I saw a family, right? So, you know, it, I try to as best I can just drive home like there is like it's a constant struggle between three areas and you know first is going to and you guys can jot this down if you want you know the first is self right so just something i say to my kids is like you know it's you have to love yourself first right you have to and every, you've probably heard that before you got to take care of yourself you got to you got to eat good you got to exercise you got to blah, blah you know um, i neglected my i still will err on the side of neglecting myself if i'm not careful right cuz it's kind of Everything else in life will just pop up. But so it's like, so how are we getting better here, staying happy here? Um, you know, whatever, you know, for me, home is just JJ, Julia, and Erica, right? So just whatever home is to you. Um, before them, it was just, it was me. <laughs> and so how, how is my, you know, you could think of like this is your personal life, right? This, the self is, I don't know if you want to get into like it's your, your spiritual, it's your, I mean, just your, health, just your health in general, right? The hardest thing to do, especially when George Tama, like, you know, it's a generational thing. Now, every generation thinks that the generation below them is lazy, right? That's just write a passage. We all get older. We, we only remember the hardworking parts of our lives, you know, just whatever, you know. So every generation has their stories to why they're better. It's just how it works. But the, um, you know, with, with this is just, it is, we're the lap dog of society. Like we are the house pet in the United States, like the things that we complain about, right? We're, we're like that house cat that does like, gross, you got me like organic, or like you got me, you know, diced up like chicken and beef. Like, ugh. it's the cat that walks away and like, it's not organic, I'm not gonna eat it, right? Just kind of like, that's, that's us as US citizens, right? It's just like, oh, gross, you know, like I'm not doing that. So, you know, you look at like globally, like life is not that, like they don't have the opportunities we have. Correct, but there is none, you know what I mean? So we definitely have our issues. We got a lot of stuff, we have a lot of work ahead of us, but just think of this is really, taking care of yourself is very hard because you can't really find a good, like a meal that's good, like legit good for you, right? It's hard work to get that, right? It takes a lot of time that we don't really have, a lot of effort that we probably don't want to spend, you know, meal prepping and all that. It's in exercise, right? It's just kind of like everything, everything to keep, take care of yourself. There's a lot of barriers in between. There's a lot of things in between. You throw in like, you know, 
the internet, social media, all it's just kind of a barrage that the, the, just the there's nowhere to escape if that makes sense. And um, you know, think of like before social media, before the internet, like there's a lot of great things that social media has brought, but you could, there was space between you and everything else, you know, for the most part. Now it's just like you can't you can't get there's a constant barrage coming at you 24 seven of things people need from you, things that just like everybody is everyone's coming at you all the time, texts, emails, phone calls, it, it just it's, it never stops. The ad, oh yeah. They know us, but like talking about self, who knows yourself the best? Alexa, yep. <laughs> Alexa, Facebook, Instagram, like getting into golf. I not once saw any ads about golf ever in my entire life until I started like getting into it and I started like searching things, da da da. What do you think I see 24 7 if I'm scrolling through? Golf, 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 right? Oh, oh this, you know, look at this shot. But, uh, um, so this is, if you're not anchored here, and if you're not doing, and this is different for everybody, right? Like what, what, what I need for myself isn't necessarily what you need, right? So just taking care of self, home, your personal life, you know, another thing is these two things get neglected the most because, in, again, not trying to be cliche, in the United States, we work, right? Except for these like, younger generations. They don't work. They're lazy. They suck, right? No. You know, so, or you want to call this the, profe you know, professional, right? like, you're here. Th right now, you're bettering yourself. And what you are learning, right, and what you're achieving and accomplishing, no one can take this away from you. So you're going to have that personal sense of achievement and satisfaction. Like, so this, it all carries over. But what's it really, you know, the box it's checking, right, is here. So just my challenge to you is, is this stuff is important, but are there ways that you could be taking that same 24 hours and saying, you know what, I'm just going to take this 30 minutes of my day, and that's going to be my focus more on self. And I always tell myself, this is supposed to be a star. I don't know what that is, but uh, <laughs> it's almost my bedtime. But the, uh, you know, so think of like, you know, for me, it's just you see dishes, do them. And don't do them later because they won't be there. They'll just be, Erica will do it because it's important to her. And then she'll remember that's the 312th time that James walked by the dishes and did not do them. And that's not good. So is this, if I beat this to death enough, is this? So um, very good. So what I will do is, because I will obviously talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Um, I'll get each of your names and kind of just, you want to tell me, I don't know, let's, let's talk about what, what drives you. So start here, sir. What's your name? Bob. Bob? B-O-B. -B. Yeah. So Bob, what, what drives you? What, like, what brought you here? Like, what keeps you coming back? You know? Um, I want to teach. Okay. You're teaching on a college level, like what is that? And again, there's no wrong answer as long as it's Bob's answer. But like, what is, what is that? How does it make you feel? Was it do? Like, what is that? What's the ultimate thing that that's gonna, you know, satisfy in you? You know, they always tell you find a job doing something you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Enjoy teaching others. Okay. But in the United States, we don't care about joy. We care about money, right? You know, just oh, sorry. So, <laughs> again, I live in the business world, yeah. so this is—it's just. It, but this, why? Why are people so miserable? Right. You can have both, right? Are they going to force you to teach for free? I mean, you—you you might like volunteer or like to to get your foot in the door, right? You get some opportunities, but it's like if, if I can have joy and that joy makes me money to do what I need to do, that's pretty cool. So, joy, come on. 
happiness. Whoa. I love it. Thank you, Bob. All right. You, sir. Sean. Sean? S H A W N. S H A W N. There you go. That's supposed to be W? Yep. My wife says I suck at listening, so I think I just suck at hearing, but that's a whole other thing. So, Sean, I butchered. Let, I just. It's okay. No worries. That's all good. Oh, man. It's just uh, have a little faith in me. I apologize. So, Sean, cool way it's spelled. Um, so, oh. Yeah. Are you a Sean? Who, yes, so, <laughs> my bad. So you're here? No. Nope. No? Change that W to a U. There you go. I mean, that could be a U or a W. I'm it's saying. It could be an or. You could have just got it right. So it's such a U-E. There you go. I'm uh, Sean. Uh, yeah, cool way. Uh, there you go. So, dude, that's awesome. There's just what's wild, too. So I can make that a little better. The only difference is that little extra thing. Interesting. I love it. <laughs> Foot in mouth, right? Yeah, it's like, so here we go. Uh, so, all right, Sean, Sean with a W. Um, what, so like, what, what's driving you to be here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever I do, and you know, it's, it works with my wife too because we like to be there and help, right? Yeah. So it's, works, works, it works at home, it works at work. So, yeah. It's good stuff. Helping people is cool. So, all right, so when you help people, what does that, like, what does that do for you? What does that. I, I mean, you feel good about it. You know, okay. You, you get a, I mean, it's, I mean, it's selfish, right? You feel good when you help other people. Okay. Right? You, you enjoy that, right? You feel good about it. Selfish. All right, cool. He said it makes you feel good, right? Yeah. You know, you get to watch somebody when you do something nice for them. You get to watch them and you, you know, they smile or they're thankful and it's, you feel good about them. Yeah. So, is feeling joy, enjoying what you do, is that selfish? Well, you get that right? feeling, yeah. I mean, Technically, you, I, you right? You gotta do something that you have to be a little selfish. Well, mm -hmm. Because if you're not finding enjoyment out of what you're doing, you're not going to do it very well. Yeah. And I don't look at selfish as a bad word. No. Hmm? It's if, 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 you, if you do things that help you feel better, you're going to do more of them. You'll be better at it. Yeah. And everybody does. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. just even with the selfish, I never always look at it as a bad I never really have mm -hmm. Don't be selfish. AKA, do what I tell you. Yeah, exactly. do, do what I want, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so that's where, like anything in life, right? Taken to one extreme, being selfish is going to help a lot of people, bring a lot of joy, do a lot of good. Taken to the other extreme, you know, it's going to do a lot of bad. It's going to hurt a lot of, I mean, so like that's where, Obviously, this is a safe place. I'm not worried about you being selfish, right? Selfish people don't show up after work to better themselves. I mean, like, the bad selfish people are most likely out trying to con somebody right now, right? They're, they're, they're doing things that are probably not bettering anybody. So, um, yeah, so there's a good selfish and there's a bad selfish. Does that make sense? So, like, just anything. <sighs> Anything and everything can be your blessing and your curse, right? You know, wanting to help people, right? Being, wanting to teach, right? That can, at times in life, I'm sure you can look back and say, you know what, I was trying so hard to help so-and-so and it cost me money, it cost me time, it cost my sanity a little bit for a while. Like, and the same thing, I was, I was trying so hard to teach someone something and just, it's hard because you don't have the crystal ball as to like who's worth the investment, who's not, right? That, you, so it just, 
that was a very difficult thing for me too, getting into the, the, the big kid world and the grown up world and, and just, you know, why, what if, you know, why am I teaching someone, you know, when I started I was 23, almost 24 years old, so a year and a day I get promoted, right, and I'm building a team, blah, blah, blah. Why am I teaching someone in, who's in their mid 50s or someone in their 60s, like why am I teaching them like how to, you know, work hard and be good to people, and like not make excuses and blah, blah. So again, talk, that generational thing, it goes both ways, right? So there's, there's younger guys and gals that are just like looking at us being like, no, they're idiots, right? They, they, don't, they don't know what they're doing. They're, they're, you know, they don't work hard, blah, blah. So, um, you know, just, I had to learn, it's just my love of people. My love of people is also my curse. So I mean, I have to like, and again, it's I'm, I'll be forty here, you know, in, in January. Way way easier to kind of like navigate, just you know, who am I going to spend time on? But I still don't know, right? My wife's favorite thing to tell me is like, James, you know, glass, you know, is the glass half full? It's supposed to be glass, um, half full, half empty type person. So. Um, because, like, where I start, that thing is empty. It's not half full, not half empty. It's empty. And you gotta, you got to build up my trust. That's where she's, I'm getting, my wife's awesome, but she also doesn't have a, a lot of the drama that I have in my life because I'm like, for James, the glass isn't half full. It is so full that it's constantly overflowing. That person then betray betrays my trust and my love, dumps it out. Do I do I have my blinders on? Because I'm like, oh, you know, they're a good person. You know, that was just a mistake. You know, they had a good reason why they did it. I'm pouring water back in the glass as they're dumping it out, right? So again, are there areas of your life where People are dumping that glass out, and you just keep dumping it back in. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're a good person. You're, working, you're a hard worker, right? That's where it's just, it's interesting to me that usually the good people are the ones that are the easiest to take advantage of because we, it, we see the best in people, but like you can't stop. You can't stop because most people are good. So anyway, that... <laughs> Really not art. It was not my thing. So, but uh, you can. So, but um, cool. Feel good. And then, um, so I guess like, are you also gonna teach at a college level? I guess like, what's kind of your? Just I just want to be able to continue to help people. Mm -hmm. Whatever way I can, past retirement, into re I mean, just as well like spend my time doing. Gotcha. I have an inkling too that you helping people also is how you make your money. I'm a nurse. Okay, mm -hmm. dude. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> so, which there's a huge shortage. Mm -hmm. yeah, huge. So, how cool is it that you can selfishly help people? Mm -hmm. I go in and do my cheesy song and dance talks. You're like, you're literally like, like bringing people back to life and like saving their life and everything. So this, that's cool. That's awesome. You know. So, and then obviously with the MBA, magically, you can climb the ladder. Um, there is. A, you ever see the show Vikings? Mm -hmm. um, it's if you just go on YouTube, like there's a bunch of different Vikings clips, but there's one where. It's basically the guy who ends up becoming the, the king and all that fun stuff, but I'm, I'm going to butcher the quote and all that. But just ultimately what the guy is saying, and it really resonated with me, and what's, again, talking about you're taking a step up, and you're taking a step, like you're all taking steps up, but it's because of, he talks about, he's like, I never wanted to be king, but I was forced to because of other people's actions. So think of, sure, all of you 
may have had a bad boss at one time, or you may, you know what I mean, like, you, like you look around and like upper management, you're just like, how did these people get here, right? Just kind of. So there's certain moments in life, right, where it's just like, this was not. You talk about how your plan never really goes to plan. My intention was just, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a professor, I just want to help people, I want to teach, right? But now you're climbing the ladder because, guess what? It's either I'm taking this promotion or I'm taking this opportunity to help. Now I can help a lot of nurses. Now I can help a lot of professors. Lot, I can, the impact you can have is deeper and wider because, two, you know in the back of your mind, if you don't take that opportunity, someone who does not care but anyone feeling good, anybody feeling joy, doesn't care about anything that's important to others, they're going to take, you th that's nothing. How many people, when they're in it for the wrong reasons, they'll take that promotion not even think, they're not qualified, they're not ready. That thought's not even crossed their mind. Because everything in life is someone else's fault. So, again, trying to bring the thunder. I'm not trying to like shoot. <laughs> it's up to you guys. It's like you have to save the community. Um, so, but is this making sense so far as much as it can? So, Sean, who is also spelled awesomely. Um, <laughs> what? So, what drives you here, buddy? Um, I guess like. Yeah, I guess. Uh, what, however, think of like there's no wrong answer as long as it's yours. Um, but like, obviously, getting your MBA is not like it's not like a right. small task. You know, you're just kind of like, yeah, hey, I'll do it here and there. I'll dabble and I'll you know, I can just quit. You know, I mean, like you technically can quit, but like usually you're not. You haven't made it this far. With, in life, right, with that kind of quitting mentality. So I guess wherever it started, or whatever got us here. Yeah, so I guess my thing would be, because I'm, I'm always ever-changing, but mm -hmm. my biggest thing is just, uh, just really challenging myself, pushing myself, mm -hmm. you know, not settling, but always seeing how far can I go until I just know I can't go no more. That's it. And this is so, <clears throat> and I'm, so think of it like too, a lot of like, you all probably have like a mixture of this stuff, right? And uh, you, sir, in the back, what's your name, buddy? Jared. J A R. J A R? Yeah, E D. Jared, all right. I'm James, Jonathan, Josiah, and Jared, my three younger brothers. So, Jared. <laughs> always wrote his name J-E-R-E-D because that's what my mom and dad told him. Come to find out, like, he, so he's, uh, he got his doctorate in physical therapy, so he's, like, trying to graduate, uh, and, like, somehow, and, like, he's going to be a traveling physical therapist, so he's, like, going to be moving to Atlanta, but all this stuff's going on. Guess what his birth certificate says? J-A-R-E-D. So he had to go to court to change his name to what he thought his name always was, so... It's a funny little side story there, but uh, um, so yeah, so just in that same note, like what what drives you, what like what brings you here? Bob spoils my what, what he said. He said like you know, <laughs> work and education. Okay. Uh, and this is a means to do more of it and do it better. Do more. Do better. <laughs> right. So would you all agree that interwoven in, the, in all of you, right, in how you think, how you see the world, how you see yourself, can kind of all be in here, some way, shape, or form? So blessing and curse. Can more be bad? Yeah. Can be OK, the concept of better, actually being better is good. The process and the quest for better, does better always exist? Yeah. 
in this room it does with us, right? But like, just think of, are we sometimes chasing something, like, it's hard. I can't do it. I do it at times. I'll go through little spurts. But this whole, like, concept of enough or good enough. I go crazy. I can't just sit still and like, okay, well, I guess you know it's good enough. Everything's good. I'm just gonna keep going, right? So, do we also have, do we have to be careful here? Okay. Right, right. And so, yeah. So that's do more, do better. But at the same time, just like Sean said, less is more. Just like George said, James has these three dumb as a rock, simple ideas. Blew my mind, right? So I just he didn't. He, he did. <laughs> so we were playing the same rocks, but the uh, so just think too, like think about all the cliches, right? That used to drive me crazy. Where you know every my, my parents, every coach, every teacher, professor. You ask a, you know ask a question or like it could be anything you were going through, right? In, in school and growing up. And they all like, you know, well, you know, less is more, right? Like, you know, you see, your blessing could also be your curse. And, you know, challenge, challenge yourself. It's all about the journey. You know, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. It's just like, what? Like, what is the answer? Stop giving me this crap, right? And then you grow up, and you're like, no one's got this figured out. Everybody's confused. There is no textbook for life, right? So just kind of like, is you're like, this is nuts, right? This is nuts. So, and every and that, that was kind of my my main aha from last year, was the realization. You would think I would figure it out beforehand, but like the realization is every day of life. Again, if we're, when we're focused on the right things, is going to bring more, even our, your worst day, your hardest day. You still feel good about it. You still it's joy because you knew you know you were working towards better. You know you were challenging yourself. You knew you were you know what I mean like you're working towards that goal that you have, that greater good in your life that makes you happy to help people. Right? But so every day gets better at the same time. So better is it is better easier? Right? But just kind of, um, you know, those are the moments too. Let it drive you, right? Let it keep driving you to be better. But at the same time, let it drive you to find the joy in just, in, just being alive. Right? Just being here in this room. Like, how cool is this? How cool is this? So, um, very good. The um, let me scooch back, Sean, to this so challenging and, and pushing your you know yourself. Like, why? why? I think it, for me, and I'm about to get personal. That's good. It just, it just it comes from a place where like you feel like you're just lazy. You feel like you can't do what everybody else can do. Okay. So Mm -hmm. Just like, I want to like show that I can do this. And that I honestly mm -hmm. just prove myself that I can do this. Like, I can be in a position of authority. I can be, you know, I could hold an office. I can be someone that others can look up to. Because at the mm -hmm. end of the day, I want to do it all right. You know, yeah. Like that, not just do it just to do it. And, prove, and when you're able to prove those things, right? So just think about like, this isn't the first time you've done something successful, right? This is the first time you haven't like kind of battled the odds and, and won. So like how did that make you feel when you accomplished that? Like think of like, you know, one of the most recent things or even going back to childhood, like I they all said I couldn't do this and I did. Yeah. Like how did that feel? Yeah. 
have, have, have you all accomplished something that at one time you thought was impossible? And then you get hooked, right? It feels good. So just, you know, freedom, I'm talking about like freedom to my comments before about social media and, you know, like, I'm not, the, I'm not great with technology, so maybe I have a little bias against, you know, like, this computer sucks, you know, so, but the, uh, um, the independence and that freedom that you feel is just kind of like, it feels like it's us against the world all the time because all, you're just, this, the world is just getting crammed, crammed down every single day, right? Everybody's opinions, everybody's this, everybody's that. Um, so just, yeah, the freedom. Because when, is it easier, I'm trying to remember like the exact quote, but like, you basically have, you have, talking about harder, like you have two different, you have, unlike you, the people that choose the path of late, that are truly lazy, right, they don't just like, I feel like you and I are the same way where it's like, if that lazy talk is just all in our head. We're always just yelling at ourselves, like, you're lazy, you know, you took one minute to take a breath, like, you suck, right, just kind of like, where did that come from? Well, yeah, myself, right? So just, there's, there, life is going to be extremely difficult no matter what. So you can just do as little as possible, like, and deal with, I mean, like, doing as little as possible, you can't tell me that your life is easier than if you did as much as possible, right? Either way is hard, but I'll take, I'll take the hard of me getting better and me, you know, bettering myself and the people around me. If that makes sense. So, um, isn't it wild how philosophical this stuff get? Right? You know, just kind of like again, this is a business talk. I'm talking about plans. Talking about goals. Right? It's just like, and it's just, it's emotions and, and yeah. philosophy. You know what I mean? So just kind of the emotional intelligence. Right? So, um, awesome. Thank you, brother. So, and then I'm assuming that this proving something, freedom, that can make you money too. Yeah. Magic. Magic, right? So, again, this is what I'm trying to get across here, too, is what makes you happy, what brings you joy, what drives you, and you have the money to pay the bills. And, you know, everything costs money, right? So just kind of like I had I had the false belief growing up that you know money was for evil people, like money was bad, and like you know, money's the root of all evil type stuff. But like, well, yeah, if you're doing it for the wrong, if you're chasing money for the wrong reason, oh yeah, things are, things are get out of hand pretty quick. So, you know, my hope is that you know you're able to get what you truly want out of life and make a living doing it, right? So I think it was you said that just like if you're if you love what you do, you're not really working, right? So, um, so you don't have, we're going for the and, we're not going for the or, right? Because a lot of people will say, well, I want to be happy, so I'm going to take this low paying job, right? And it's not, that's not bad, right? It's not wrong, like, but it's like, well, hey, that's, don't just like, don't just wave the flag already. Like, don't just like default to like, correct. And so that's, it's, it's, and it's not that person, right? Somewhere along, and that's nothing like being a dad now, and like realizing how much, how much of who we are, and all this what's driving us. Somewhere we're little, as little dudes, right? Someone said something. Probably had nothing to do with what we actually thought they were talking about, but we took it as such that, well, you know, that's just how life works, right? That's just how life is. So that person somewhere along the line said, well. You want to be happy, you know. Money, money is not. You know, you fi find a low-paying job and just, you know, work as little as possible. Be like, I'm not. Like, you just kind of like. Someone told them that was how you be, find happiness is just go somewhere with no pay or low pay, or someone somewhere said, 
On the opposite of things, like with my life, was you know the money's the root of all evil, right? So I was scared and afraid to even get into business, to even like, like well, I don't want to become what people become, right? So that's where, again, just try and identify, too, is like, you know what? This, when I was seven years old, so-and-so said this. I internalized this, that, and now that's, like, that's what's driving me. And, you know, again, it's just like you can't really make that stuff go away. But, like, again, trying to identify, like, where is this coming from, right? Or if you're, if you're work, obviously, you're going to be trying to help people. You're trying to teach people. You're trying to better people. It's a lot of times it's not what it's not what James is thinking or doing or, or feeling. That's just, it's not what happened to me today. You're talking to you, know, you. You talk about something, and I, I, you know, I get angry about something, and it sets me off on some rant. It has nothing to do with a lot of what I'm getting fired up about. It has nothing to do with today. You guys didn't do anything wrong to me, right? <laughs> but it's sparking all these things. Well, eight years ago, this happened. Twelve years ago, this happened. 20 years ago, this happened, right? And then I'm like, you guys, don't let this happen to you, right? Mm -hmm. So just be aware of those things. So Jared, if, save me from my rant, dude. Um, so do more, do better. For you, like what is that, what does that do for you? Like what feelings does that generate? Like what, what, what do you get out of it that keeps you going? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm naturally energized by it. Energy. Do most people you interact with or like, are most people you come into contact with, are they usually kind of moping and tired, not energized, right? And then here you sh God, I was dead tired coming here, right? Dead tired. But the second I'm with you, I'm alive again, right? I'm just, you, I can't help it, right? So that the energy is just kind of like, so that's where, that's what's cool, man, is like, this, this is impossible. This is super challenging, and it feels so good. I can't wait to wake up. I can't wait to, to, to keep going, right? Um, and... You know, this would be something if you want to jot this down, is just where does my energy come from? And I'm going to erase that while you guys jot it down. Pop quiz, we got BLB, we got Sean with a W, we got Sean with a U, and we got Jared, which is, this is what's on your birth certificate? <laughs> all right, okay, cool. You might want to double check, man. You never know. So, all right. So, talking about energy. So, Sean, we were talking about, like, just, um, Jared made the comment of, like, what does he get out of, you know, doing more, doing better, and, and challenging himself. It's like, it, it brings him energy. Um, the, George, how am I doing on time? Uh, I'll talk the rest of my life, guys. I don't want to. I'm sure you got better places to be. Um, all right. So, and Sean, with you, so just if you want to write down where does my energy come from and really take. George, could this be extra credit, maybe? Sure. Uh, you, you guys don't seem like you need extra credit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, yeah. Like you guys don't see. <laughs> yeah, so, all right, cool. Did you, you get stickers and high fives. Uh, but the, uh, where do you get your energy from? That is something that I went, about this time last year, I went uh, saw like a speaker who's like one of the top people in our industry. Um, and it was cool, got to meet him. It was just, it was just really, again, it was exciting for me. Um, and, but this was part of his presentation. 
when he's talking about, so like you know, basically he broke down in my world real quickly. So in, in our business, in our industry, there's base, you can, you can, there's all these different types of teams out there and, and, and practices out there, but it's basically they're either one that's like, they're just that like kind of, um, uh, what was it? That's, it's like just, just themselves, right? So it's like a solopreneur, all right? I'm not going to try. Because basically it's just what happens is, is that, you know, that business owner, they just, it's just them, and that's how they like it. They get their energy from, you know, just kind of moving up the chain of like getting the bit bigger, larger clients and everything. Again, there's, that's kind of the goal, right? Why would you get your MBA? I want larger opportunities. I want, I want bigger channel. I want, you know, I want to push myself. So, but it's just like one of those things where they are like, their energy just comes from spending time with clients and clients only. Does that make sense? The other one is they called it um, the boutique. So the boutique business was just more like, kind of more like a small business type feel. And the comment he made, and it resonated with me, because again, in my industry, majority of my competitors, they live here, right? So they just, they just keep moving, like they, um, you know, we go to, you know, we qualify for top in the world at what we do. And we go to these conferences and there's all these top people and these top consultants and, you know, I'll talk to them and they always, and every time, you need to fire your clients. James, you need to just, you need to get rid, you just need to get rid of your clients. You need to get, you know, you need to start firing clients, blah, 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 blah. That ain't me. That will never be me, right? So again, talking about know thyself, right? So that where you get your energy from and also, you know, why it's so important is because that how I've been in situations where it's like I kind of went with what other people said I was should be doing or supposed to, right? I didn't, like, you know inside, your instinct, your gut's telling you, like, I get it from a logist, you know, logical, logistical, you know, whatever, transactional level, but that, that is the opposite of who I am as a human. And I'll never be, I will never be happy here, okay? So the boutique thing is like now we have a team of, you know, again, I started here. Personally, we have 10, you know, we have 10 people now part of our team. The comment he made is like, he's like, these are the people that just can't help themselves. They want to help everybody. Like they want to save the manatees. They want to save the world, right? So just kind of like, you know, this is, I'm just talking about my industry, but you can apply this to again where you're headed is again if but if it's if it's just you but it's like n none of you are really going somewhere where it's just like it's going to be just you and you're not impacting others right but it's you know think of like this is i if i want to help more people and still have the impact right and still have the level of service and still have the level of genuine love and care well i got to i need more of me right so for me, it's over the you know last ten years, is based on building. You know, I'm blessed that my team's better. Like they, they run circles around me, right? So if you can, now I had some some absolute duds that I, you know, you can talk about learning about the right person and the wrong person to have in your life. Like you know, just find if you, if you're looking to build a team. What I will say is. I would hire all four of you based on who you are and why you're doing what you're doing. The fact that you have an MBA, I, I care. It's impressive, you're working hard, but like, to me, if you have an MBA and you're good at what you do, you're great at what you do, but you're a terrible person, like get away from me, right? But think of like a lot of what happens, right, is people look the other way because if you're really good at what you do and you bring in lots of money, magically, well, you know, they do this, they do that, but we're going to let it. Eventually, like every, it's, it's so predictable. Every company, right, out there eventually has some type of exception somebody makes in the chain. And sometimes it costs the whole company, like, 
companies will go bankrupt and go out of business because somewhere in there someone made an exception of what you do is more important than who you are and why you do it. Does that make sense? So the boutique, and then there is basically it's, um, I can't remember if you said it was like more like the chop shop kind of thing. So just these were, were like kind of like private equity groups where it's just like get as many clients as you can as quickly as you can and package it up and sell it, right? So, so you, can, you can apply these things to any industry, any, you know, anything you're getting into. But like, you know, that was my aha moment of like, because I was built... I was building this even though everybody was telling me this was better. Everybody was telling me, you know, this was better. That this is this is this is more work. To us, more work. Ooh, sounds like a challenge. Sounds like better. I think I'm into that, right? So just kind of figuring out, you know, what part of teaching, like what what is it? Like what element of there, what position, what title you know, it's like I hate the whole title thing. The resumes, the business cards, all that. Like when I speak with like, you know, the the undergrad college students, and like this, I love like the high school and the middle school too. And I'll have them come up. I'm like, you know, who's more powerful, the, you know, the person or the paper? And I'm like, have a piece of paper. I'll be like, this is your degree, your diploma, your resume, your you know, your business card, your your title, blah blah blah. I'm like, do me a favor. Just see if you can rip rip all these in half. I mean, just rip it all in half. I'm like, oh, you mean the person? is more powerful than the, a piece of paper. So that MBA, that's another thing too, I would challenge you is let the MBA, you know, always remember that's an extension of you, it is not you. Right, you don't need, you don't need this MBA to be worth what you know you're worth. That makes sense. So, man, you guys get me fired up. So, cool. Um, so what else, so where does your energy come from? Um, I'll kind of leave it open to you guys. Like, so what? What else amidst my rants? Like, what is there any? What questions do you have? Like, what things are kind of on your mind as you're finishing your MBA? As you're kind of taking this next step? Like, what? What are you unsure of, or what do you wish you had the answer to? I have a question about yes. this. Yes. Mm -hmm. How this come about? This is a big deal, right in the book. Yeah. Um, I saw a speaker. At the, it was the Lake Communicator, it was like, a, like a networking group. And um, the guy said, the best business card is a book. And again, talking about, like, I've always, I always wanted to write. I had an English major and a writing minor. I'm like, I have to, again, talking about things you feel, that piece of paper. Well, I have to do something, right? I went to school for this, so I have to do something. So there was always, that was, again, that's a false narrative in my head. I didn't have to do it. But like that was always something like be cool to write a book, right? When he said the best business card is a book, now I was able to say, ah, oh, this is something that I've always wanted to do. And I again I was wasn't as far along in my my journey of emotional intelligence. So like I had like, oh I can justify it for work. Right, so it's like I can. I, I was forcing at that time in my life. I was forcing the things I loved and the things that brought me joy. I was like trying to force it into this no happiness allowed box of work. Right, so work. That's it. Um, but that started me down that path. Um, I used to like Create Space is like Amazon's like self publishing um, company. So you can you can pretty much you know you uh, you know I, I paid to help them you know edit it and do the cover and all that fun stuff. But really, it was just something that I really wanted to do. Um, at the, when I published it, I had been doing this for 10 years. And so my whole goal with this was, you know, when I had graduated Notre Dame College, didn't know anything about business or planning or goal, you know, like I knew goal setting from sports, right? I mean, but like I didn't really understand how, once there's no longer a syllabus, right? Now that the teacher's not telling you what 
is an A and what's a B, what's pass or fail, right? So think about that's a lot of people get lost after school because we'll just what 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 box do I check so I pass or what box do I check you know so I don't fail? So just kind of um, this was just my mission in, in time of like helping people and teaching people, pushing myself, trying to do better, do more. Is I was like you know what. Everything I wish I knew 10 years into the big kid world in business, if I could, if I could just hand it to the James Schleicher of the world coming out of school, then my, and it's like the whole thing, like my life, is, my life will be complete. But then life kept going. I'm like, okay, I want to do more, do more, do better, right? But like, um, so th it was really pushing me. And then also I wanted, um, we found out we were pregnant with uh, JJ. Um, you know, that was kind of another thing that was pushing me was to have. I guess my mind just really warped. But the uh, you know, it's like, well, if something ever happened to me, JJ will never have to wonder. Well, what would Dad do? Like, or what would Dad say? Or what would Dad, you know, what would Dad think about this? You know, what would Dad want for me? So, um, you know, so that I had kind of those two driving forces that it's something I wanted to do. I you know trick myself into allowing it, myself to do it, you know, um, instead of just endless work and um, having the, I think I published it officially a month after JJ was born. So writing it actually is not easy. Publishing is, it's very tedious, very tedious. So, but it's, I would definitely, again, I, I would encourage, I mean, everybody's got their story, right? Everybody's got, and, um, you know, if it's, if it's something that's important to you, you can definitely follow up with me because I would love to you know, chat with you about it. Because um, it's, it's been very cool for me to be able to have something to give someone. It's like, hey, I, I clearly go all over the place. But here is a nice little straightforward way. <laughs> you know, and each chapter, like, I suck at reading. I'm the, I'm the world's slowest reader. So it's, I, I wrote it for people like myself who even if you can't read well, you can get through in about an hour. And at the end of each chapter is like you know, your top three takeaways. So it's more, you know, my, what I'm interested in isn't necessarily like, hey, tell me about what you liked about what I did. It's more of, give me the three things from chapter one that I can support you in that you're going to do. You know, just like, what did you pull away that's going to give you like an action step to that? So um, did that answer your question? I kind of get all wound up again. <laughs> so, but uh, what else? So when you first were out, self, home, and work. Yep. Right? Self was on top, yep. home, and work. So I'm assuming that you wrote that because you got to take care of yourself mm -hmm. before you take care of home, before you take care yep. of home, right? Yep. Um, and I, I think a lot about that, right? So I would want to help. I want to put home and work Kills natural, you, right? It yeah. Slowly kills you, right? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Um, and, and I, you know, I do find that you and George both talked about you know, no one misses you when they're sleeping, right? So yep. getting up early, helping out yourself, and that's something I'm working on, right? Yeah. And I'm working on self a little bit, but I also find that I want to empower other people mm -hmm. to think about themselves, and that's hard. How do you get people to prioritize themselves, right? Because if they yeah. prioritize themselves. Yep. Right. And, and but that's hard. And yep. just getting people to look. Have you had success with getting people to empower themselves to worry about themselves? I like to think so. Okay. I like that. I like to think I had some impact. That's, but that's, yeah. That's huge. Right? How do yeah. people to really stop and say, Hey, I want to. I want to be successful with this. I want to. I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to do this. It's like you got to take care of yourself first. Correct. Right? How do you get people to really jump on? So I'm, when you said empower, like yeah. that was like one of the biggest things that really kind of came to me beginning of this year. Because like, so December 2021 is when I officially took, I was kind of like mostly running the team five years prior to that. And then so you know, um, my mentor who was running the office, he retired and, you know, just it was, a, it was, a, it was about as smooth a transition you could possibly have. And it was still like, oh, wow. Like this is, you know, this is crazy. So again, trying, 
Because when you're trying to empower people, what do we do? Like, we're talking about blessing our curse. Sometimes, like, we, we overpower the empowering, if that makes sense. Like we we kind of bring the thunder a little too much. So I would love to tell you that I learned this right away. So this is my quirky Schleicher way. Is how do you get how do you empower people? Is so what do you want to I mean like what's the you know what do you want to empower them? Well I want them to take better care of themselves, right? And I want so like our my mission coming in this, I've been very vocal about this with teams, like, hey, we've been number one office in the country for the last seven years, going on eight now. Like it's, you know, again, it's very blessed, right? It's very blessed that the numbers, which again, here I am running around saying numbers don't define you, but like, hey, it's pretty cool when you can can do both, right? But the I want to continue that success. But I also need to vocalize and communicate very clearly is I don't want number one at work or number one at home and self. I want number one at work and number one at home. And I don't know about you, every time I've gotten better and I've self-developed, magically I got better at work, right? Every time I, I got better at home, magically carried over. If, you're str if, if stuff's going on at home, you, can't, you can barely see straight at work. You're like, oh, right? You're trying to... So that's where it kind of, it all carries over. Um, just today, like one of the guys on my team, like we we're talking about time management and talking about just, again, his life's getting a lot busier in a good way. But so we went through, we're talking about like, okay, magic wand, no restrictions. Perfect Monday. What does it look like? What, start to finish, what does Monday look like, right? So Monday, I'm doing blah. Perfect. Tuesday, picture perfect Tuesday. What is it? I'm doing this. So like, I'm laying out the what and like kind of the, the framework for I want him to be better. And it's not about, I don't, he's very, 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 very good at what he does. Very, very productive. Very, like great father, great husband, like great, like just great. But, you know, he, he's want, he wanted help with time management. So t is it time management? Can we control the time? Time management is all here. It's, okay, I am going to do, make this choice instead of this choice. And I'll make this choice instead of this choice. I'm coming here instead of, right? So laying out, like, I didn't tell him what to do on Monday. Like, okay, if you want to be, if you want to have, you know, be efficient as possible, this is what I do. Mondays I'm up here and I do this, and I da 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 right? And the, two, the whole conversation was all about magic wand, no restrictions. Best Monday of your life. Every Monday, what does it look like, right? And he had all these different things. And so we went through every single day. Did anything about work actually come up? And his picture-perfect week was he like, oh, I can't wait. I'm going you know, to do this. I'm going to set up this account. And I'm going to get a referral from so-and-so, right, Bubba? None of that came up. What came up? We got two daughters. Uh, Quinn is six, yeah, six, six and four, like seven, just turned seven, wow, seven and four. So he's got a seven-year-old daughter, four-year-old daughter, married, and they're, you know, they're, again, they're helping take care of, of their parents and all that stuff like that. So, you know, maybe, what are some things that he may have brought up? Time. Time, right? Go and watch whatever they Work-life balance, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, so he brought up like, so like how Menor has like the Menor Rocks concert. Yeah. Menor Rocks. Okay, tell me more. Like, what, like, okay, you like the concert? Like, his wife loves the concert. So, again, as your boss, as the leader of this team, there will be no Menor Rocks because I need you running meetings. Because that's how business is done, right? Dude. Your wife wants to go to this? Go. Go, dude. The number one thing you can do? This, right? And then 
Um, what else? What else might I have brought up? Time for self. You know, mm -hmm. Go out and take a walk. Yes. Go out in the park or something. So, so, yep. Sleep. Yeah. Right? Nap. Naps are cool, you know. Yeah. So, and for him, he's like, we're all we're all like ultra nerds on our team. We all have these nerd nerds about certain things. But like, so his words, I need gamer time. All right. So, so we were talking about this. We were talking about some other stuff that he wanted to do for himself, right? And what's tough, right, is you usually, you can't, like, I have, we all have lots of things we would love to do for ourselves, and love to do for our family, and love to do for our friends, and love, right, you know what I mean? I'm an all-in, all-out person. I'm not, I am not talented enough to, to do multiple things and do them really well. So I got to kind of pick one lane and stick in it, right? So, you know, for him, it was like this gamer time, and there's some other things, so... But he was like, I was like, well, what time? I'm going to do Wednesdays, and I'm going to do it at 9 p.m. It's 9 p.m. It's an hour for myself, right? Kids are asleep. So again, my, we, 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 we all follow the my family doesn't miss me when they're sleeping creed, right? So all right, dude, 9 p.m. Also, as we're talking about other things, like, man, by Wednesday, I'm exhausted. So talking about, so, you, so we have the comment about sleep, right? I'm like, all right. I'm not, so this is where there's moments where you just, this is not my life, right? This is not my dream schedule. But I can say, again, not, well, here's what, what I would do, or here's what I'm doing. Like, it's more of a kind of floating the idea of, like, all right, brother, well, you're saying you want gamer time at 9 p.m. on Wednesdays. You're also saying by Wednesday you're exhausted. So, what if <laughs> maybe instead of Wednesday night, like I'm not saying don't do gamer time, but like Wednesday night, what if that's early bedtime, right? What if that's like, and and I, this is me talking. I'm like this famous last word. There's a reason why I can't play video games because when I start something, I must finish it, right? Must finish it. The Batman games when like so again, this is before kids and all that, but like. Any of the Batman games. I, I ended up buying a PS4 because the new Batman, like, I didn't want a PS4. I didn't need a PS4. But Batman came out, and it's, this is showing, too, like, how long I, <laughs> they have PS5. Like, I don't even know what they have anymore, right? But, like, I'm like well, I got to get it. You know, but I would, I would literally not run any meetings and just, like, shut down work for two to three days. And I would just not stop playing because I knew that, the second I start this, all I'm going to be thinking, dreaming, wanting to do is be the game, right? So do more, do better, right? Um, help save the citizens, you know? But the, so I'm like, be careful, but what if Wednesday, you know, I don't know, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. or whatever you want to do, right? So you knock out a whole bunch of stuff early more of like your admin, follow-up, research. And then you don't do any meetings until noon after, right? And that's your gamer time, right? Is you just, you just block out. You don't have the father guilt. You don't have the husband guilt. You don't have the I'm exhausted, but I'm, you know, the self-guilt too. Think of like we, we guilt ourselves on this. The irony of it all, right? We hate on ourselves, we yell at ourselves, beat ourselves up for the stuff we're not doing. So instead of like sometimes just finding a way to do it, we just rather like beat ourselves up, right? So like, like all right, man. And also too, he's got a lot of gamer buddies. So I'm like, there are, a lot of them too are very successful in business. And not trying to like <laughs> be the downfall of your guys' businesses, but what if like, hey, you can make it like, even if it's like a networking thing, right? Hey, guys, Wednesdays, 10 a.m., let's just get together. We'll talk for 15 minutes about maybe some people that we you know, think might be good fits to refer each other. We can talk about, like, hey, I'm having this issue with a client. I'm having this issue with a team member. I'm having this issue with my business. or like, you, can, you know, make it productive. And guess what? 
You do your thing, and we're just all going to take 45 minutes of guilt-free gamer time. And the second it's 11 a.m., it's off. See you next week, kind of thing. You know, so just I'm not saying like it just. It's the same 24 hours. So if I want to impact, I'm most I'm. I'm most likely going to be one of the only bosses to ever, leaders to be like, you know what? We need to fit more video games into your work schedule, right? You know, like I, you know, I'm, uh, it just. But if that's what he wants, right? And you know, there's always a, if you can make it more productive and guilt-free, then fine. You know, and, and for my schedule, like right now, I'm supposed to. I'm I'm wanting to go to bed around this time. Right, I want to get like kids bed. Like kids don't want to go to bed. Dad wants to go to bed. Like let's go bedtime. Right, you know, because I want to be up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. to to kickstart the day again, get the day rolling. So, um, there's always time, but again, when you're talking about, I want to do these 12 things. Like we're never, you're never going to do all 12. You can do it eventually. Like. I got 12 things I absolutely would love to better myself in, right? January, what's the most important? Of all 12, what's the most important? Boom, January. My theme for January is this. February, second most important thing I want to do on that list. Boom. I just, and then magically, are we, so are, are we creatures of habit and routine? So, a lot of times I'm talking to people and say like, well, what's your routine? And I don't really have one. Okay, well, I mean, like when you wake up, like what do you do? Well, you know, I, I get up, you know, check my phone, and um, then I'll, you know, check a couple emails, and then I'll make some toast, and then I'll, you know, get my coffee, and then I'll, you know, just uh, check the news, and then I'll, and like, so they're walking me through this like 47-step process that they don't realize is a habit, right? So, what? And why is it so hard to change? So a lot of times we don't realize it's just a habit. It's just a routine. So just change your routine, change your habit. Uh, there's a great book if you want to jot this down. It's called Atomic Habits. Great book. Um, not trying to give it all away and pretend I, I know all this stuff and, and do it all by um, the best, but he talks about just if you're trying to change a habit, create a new habit, you know, empower yourself, right? The brain is going to do better when there is, I will do what at when in the where. I'm butchering this. Like this is, but basically. I am going to exercise at 5.30 a.m. in the basement, at the gym, right? Or I'm, like it's, you are literally say, saying what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, where you're going to do it. And it talks a lot about, too, if you can, like have certain areas that are designated for just one thing. Now, I have a six-year-old, four-year-old, like, like my entire house is just whatever they decide to drag into that room kind of thing. But like, you know, and he says, make it a goal, two minutes. So if you want to start, you want to start exercising an hour a day, or you want to start running five miles a day, or you want to whatever it is, it's like two minutes, get dressed in your exercise clothes, stretch, and then the timer goes off, you're done. And then next day, guess what? You'll probably do a little longer in two minutes. The next day, you'll probably. So just these little teeny tiny incremental habits and routines. Um, that is the only, and again, I, I wish I read this book earlier, because that's kind of what I, I was always trying to like hack my routine and get m more out of the same amount of time. Um, the term he'll use is um, habit stacking. And, but that's one thing that I would always try to do as well. So, like, okay, I'm exercising. I'm doing this Navy, you know, Navy SEAL leadership training where you know, they're going to put us through this crazy two-day course thing. 
and the personal trainer, you know, physical fitness person's like, okay, you need to do all these mobility exercises so you don't get hurt. I'm like, ah, oh, awesome, you know. So I'm trying to exercise, and then I, you know, do the mobilities, and the next thing you know, it's like, I don't have time for this. So like, now, in between sets, of my exercise, I do one mobility instead of doing trying to do all the mobility stuff at once. I'm doing one mobility thing in between each exercise. Okay, started golfing. Coach gives me these golf things, stretches to do because my back is killing me, right? So I don't have time for that. So set of exercise, mobility exercise, golf exercise, and then just so like with the habit stacking, like just, there's no way I could just do it all back to back to back. Um, so if there's anything that I mean, I hope you guys get something out of this. This help, okay? So this, I'm trying not to overwhelm. Like this is, I get so fired up. Um, but like, bit, please, like, I wish I knew this. But again, use this on yourself, right? Here's the what I want. Sean wants this, right? I want this. And I want that. And I want that. Cool. Right. So. Sean, who's here, who wants to be this Sean over here, how? Because it's, and he talks a lot about too, all this nonsense, it is literally a change of identity. Your MBA, I don't think any of you got into this, and it's not, and again, I'm not like, you're, it's not your style to be like, Oh, when I'm an MBA, like I'll be a whole new person, and no one can stop me because I'm my MBA, right? You know what I mean? Like you're not doing it for those reasons, but like, whether you like it or not, like, your identity has changed. And what he talks about too is like, so Sean has Sean 1.0 has to see Sean 2.0, not just as what you would like to do or the habit you like to create. This is the identity. This is who I am. Right? So whatever it is, and it's just like I am Sean 2.0, and I empower people by helping them figure out how to empower themselves. You know, like just whatever it's going to be. You guys rock. You guys rock. So anything else before I ramble on for another 12 hours? Trying to find joy in the things that were told to you that you had to accomplish. Mm -hmm. How did you knock that barrier down? Um, like how you said, you know, if you get this, then you'd be cool here. How did correct. You yeah. The um, let me. You guys, cool if I erase it. You need anything else here? Okay. Um. So you're talking more about like, um, kind of like, I'll be happy when. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is hard. This is very hard. I'll give you my most e latest example. You do not destroy happiness and joy in life and whatever makes you. You enjoy it. My golf coach the other day said, James, one does not destroy golf. They enjoy golf because I was out in the driving range and wanted to chuck every golf club across the universe. And because, and I, again, I'm like Captain Insano. Like I don't want to, I don't want to just golf, man. I want to be great. Like I want to be good, man. I want to like. I was like Captain Insano. Captain Insano. Did. So sorry. So good, but. Um, you know, so like I'm talking about like I want to destroy golf, but I feel like golf's destroying me. So that's where again, blessing and curses. I forgot the whole reason why I even I I would I got into golf because I'm like, hey, I kind of like this. I enjoy spending time with people. I enjoy being outside. 
and I enjoy one out of every 50 times I swing, I'm like, whoa, that was cool, right? So this is hard. And I would, I would challenge you to do is, again, when it's like, hey, I do, I'm not here to destroy my MBA class, right? I'm here to enjoy. Um, it got a lot easier for me having kids because it was like a constant reminder of like, what the heck, like, why am I all worried about, like, what am I getting all fired up about this over here? You know, like, why am I beating myself up over here? It's just the, it's hard, like, you have to force yourself to be happy and to, like, you know, like um, a good buddy of mine, he's like, she's like, choose happy, man, choose happiness. Um, It's it's that it's it's very hard to say, happiness is a choice, right? Because so, again, this is a very loaded comment because some people like do have, we all have different things going on in our brains where we are like there's different things happening in every human being. We don't understand hardly anything about the brain, but we pretend to, right? So like the, and it's it's the one thing that we we ask people to like if they have mental illness or if they like. You know, if they have addictions, we ask them to do things with a, you know, a hurt brain that we would never ask anyone to do with any other hurt body part. So if I had two broken legs, would you say, James, go run a marathon? No excuses. You'd probably, hey, man, broke your legs, probably not a good idea, right? But we can't see the brain, right? So we don't, like, but that's what's going on is if you, so again, if you are able because it's what, what drive the amygdala has kept us alive forever. And the amygdala's job is to terrify us and keep us scared and keep us alive, right? So when, again, talking about like, I'm going to get my MBA, it's natural to have the, the majority, majority of our thoughts are negative because it's how we stay alive. But now getting your MBA and then, oh, what if I don't get that position. Well, what if I don't get a pay raise? And what if I don't, what if I don't actually empower people? And what if I don't actually like, you know, what if I'm not actually helping people? What if I'm not actually doing that? Like just, just go, 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 go. So like you have, it's, you have to like actively catch yourself. Right. And, um, one thing I try, I try to like literally, I'm that crazy person that's, you know, driving down the street and you know, just to be like, you know, doing, it's just like James, yo, snap out of it. Right. Just like try to catch yourself naturally seeing these opportunities for happiness and just the existence of being alive is it's a saber-toothed tiger ready to rip your head off, right? Because our bodies and our brains, going back to what we started off with, why <laughs> our bodies and our brain they think we are living off the land still. They don't know that there's a McDonald's on every corner, right? They don't know, like, they don't know that, you know, we don't need to store all these calories. Right, so just it is. I wish I had a way cooler answer, but just understand that, I like understand it, you know, as best you can. It's. I know where that comes from. I know where it all comes from, as far as what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And it does help to like make my own kind yep. of understanding of it. Of it. You read scripture? Dude, I was um, growing up. We were very, very much in the church and everything, but yeah, so very. Very familiar with scripture, Christian. Yeah. I, my wife, my wife, kicks my butt in Jeopardy except for the Bible questions. Those are, those are I'm like, I'm like, ha, gotcha, you know. So. Isn't it? Not to cut you off. No, go ahead. Meaning. Is that, there's a, um, why can't I, th I can't think of the author, but it's like man's search for meaning, but the guy was, he was a um, prisoner in the Holocaust. And I can't remember, it's, I think it's man's search for meaning, I believe is the name of the book. 
Um, but it, this is this every day. We come before, like no one's got this figured out. Kids think adults got it figured out. Adults are like, oh crap, can't let them know, right? Everyone's searching for meaning. So you can choose get people you love, people you trust are going to tell you, like, hey, man, it's all meaningless. Like, let it go, right? And it's all with the best intentions, but like how you internalize it, it's like, oh, well, I just, I'm just not going to care. I'm not going to, you know. So just the, the power of our words, our self-talk. You can approach everything as this is meaningless, or you can approach everything as it's meaningful, right? So it just, okay, this is, take that, take that college. I'm using English and writing, you know. But like, so just the words, man. It's just words. It's, 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 it's the self-talk. Um, meaningless. I would use this around the things that feel like it's the end of the world, but it's not. Right. Correct. 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 Right. Yeah. Wait. Oh, yeah. And this is so. I'm gonna be very again. Kind of. You're getting your masters in business, right? I have this. Um, just like taped to my laptop, my work laptop, and it just says my, you know, because a lot of times I'll ask, I just ask people like, you know, what are your, you know, what what do you, you know, if you go back in time, like what would you change or what would you tell yourself and blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's one of the conversations I had earlier this year uh, is like, you know, I've never, I never heard anybody say, I wish I ignored my family more often. I wish I could go back and ignore my family more. I wish I could go and take less care of myself. So what happens is we need to be more meaningful here. We usually see work and money and success. And again, success, there's always some, it, it doesn't matter how much I'm going to say it. Like I'm, I'm not chasing success that I thought was possible. I'm just chasing, it's just kind of like I, 10 years ago, like publishing the book. I was like, that's it. My life is perfect, you know. And I won't, you know, I won't have a worry ever again. But again, trying to like get deeper into this is, and one of, one of my mentors is probably about five six years ago. There was an industry law change, and it was I was losing my mind. I was losing my mind because again, it was the most meaningful thing that I was seeing was like, I can't believe they're changing this law, and now we have all this more paperwork, and blah, 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 right? And then, you know, made the comment like, you know, you know, my one buddy works in this other business in our industry, like, I, he says it's not so bad, but I think I'm going to go over there, and like, you know, like, again, I wasn't saying it to like try and scare him, and, and to, I did, I'm not a quitter, I, I don't, I don't want to leave, right? But I was just like venting, because I was so fired up about this stuff. And the thing he said to me is like, James, like, I love you, man. You're great at what you do, but everyone is replaceable. Everyone is replaceable. So I leave. So I, I fall off a you know fall off a cliff, get hit by a bus. Yeah, I hope people will remember that I did well at work. But where does it really matter? So when you're, you know, when you're saying like joy, happiness, work gives us happiness and fulfillment. It does, but understand that it's like that alone is going. It's never gonna. It's never gonna be enough. It's never gonna fulfill you, and you know. So if you can just make sure, no matter when you're looking for meaning. And what's happening and what you're feeling, like just take that step back and like, is this is this self, is this home, or is this work? And if it's work, is there 
is there really anything I could have done? You know, like everybody could say, oh, I would have gone and done this, right? Would have done that. But it's majority, again, the American dream. Make as much money as possible so you can spend it all, rack up debt, have a house you don't even, you know, with 87 rooms that you only go in one, have five cars that you only drive one, right? Just have, have an outfit that's out of style the moment you have it, you know? So, and it's just, it, we have, we have a lot of life backwards. So just if you're feeling stressed, if you're not feeling joy, it's usually because you're letting the outside world and outside influences, you know, trick you into the into believing what makes them happy is gonna make you happy. All right. So, but uh, cool. My little last thing I always say is uh, success. Ironically, is is the name of the poem was by Ralph Waldo Emerson, um, but that's kind of my whole what brings me meaning. Right, why, why I make decisions, as, as long as I'm thinking <laughs> in the right mind frame, is the, the last line of the poem is to know one life has breathed easier because you lived this instead of succeeded. And I know that you guys are going to help a lot of people breathe easier. I hope that I've helped you breathe a little easier, and uh, very excited. So about to get the, the act. So thank you, guys. Appreciate it.